This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. If you follow me on a platform like Instagram, you'll see that I post a lot of photographs out and about, traveling around, some light and shadow play, and what you could loosely call street photography. But you could be forgiven for not realizing that I consider my primary mode of photography, the area that I'm most skilled in, is portrait photography. And the way that the world's been over the last two years, it's just meant that I've got to shoot very few portraits over the last little while, and I really miss it. And I've set my intentions for 2022 to get back to portrait photography and even to travel around and to start running portrait workshops. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, keep an eye out. So as part of that setting of my intentions for the coming year, I decided for the last few weeks just to post portraits on my Instagram account for a change. And my DMs and comments were flooded with questions from people going, how did you shoot that? How did you like that? And especially, how did you process that image in post in Photoshop? So I thought maybe a good way to start this year would be with a series of videos showing you how I take an image from straight out of the camera to final portrait in Photoshop. A long time ago now, I did do a couple of videos on this channel around specific portrait projects where I showed you from start to finish how I retouched a portrait in Photoshop. But some of you complained in the comments that they felt too long and that I was rushing through the information. And looking back, I can see that they were right, that I was trying to pack in too much into one video. So what I've decided to do this year is to split all that up and create a series of videos covering topics like natural skin retouching, making eyes pop on a portrait but still making them look realistic, uh, doing things like shaping light with dodge and burn on a face, changing textures and colors in a background to make your subject pop, and finishing your image with things like sharpening and contrast and color. And because I'm going to try and keep these videos shorter, hopefully it will appear as a nice easy series that you can follow along with your own portraits. And because it's on YouTube, the good news is it's entirely free. My hope is that if you make your way through this whole series of videos, not only will you pick up some great tips about finishing off your own portraits, but even if you're not a portrait photographer, hopefully you'll learn a load of tricks in Photoshop that you can apply to whatever genre of photography that you shoot. And just to let you know that I probably won't be releasing these videos in this series one after another. I'm still gonna fit in the other sorts of videos I do in between as we go along. So if you don't wanna miss out and you are subscribed, make sure to hit that little bell icon and hopefully YouTube will let you know when future videos in this series are coming out so you don't miss them. So today we're gonna to begin on how do you clean up the skin of a portrait subject in one of your images but still keeping the image looking very natural and realistic. Let's jump in. Okay, so let me show you how I approach skin retouching and cleanup in my portraits. And it's important to say I'm not a professional retoucher and I don't shoot for a beauty style of photography. I want my portraits to have character to them and I want them to have a very natural look. I just wanna clean things up a little bit. And the basic rule I have is, if there's anything on the face that likely won't be there in two weeks time, I can take it out. So I keep in freckles and moles, but I will take out pimples, for example. And I know a lot of you will ask in the comments, why don't you use frequency separation? Personally, I'm not a fan of that technique. I find it gives a slightly odd edge to some of the pores where it can feel almost over sharpened in a way. So I've got a very simple three-step process I use that gets me the results I like. So let's just jump right in. I'm gonna come down here to the bottom right and I'm gonna add a blank layer. And let's call this layer blemishes. So this is uh, step one, and this is just literally just to clean up the most obvious things on the face. And I'm gonna come up here to my spot healing brush tool, and with this selected, I'm gonna make sure that my hardness is set to zero, nice soft brush, that I've got content aware selected, and this little box here is checked, sample all layers, so it's sampling the layers beneath. I used to use uh, the healing brush tool where you alt and sample and I used to use patch tools sometimes and clone tools because I didn't trust the uh, the software the Photoshop to actually work out what I wanted to do but since these recent updates and with content aware it's really become so good that I just use it as is now and it does the job for me so all I'm going to do now is just using my square bracket keys to change the size of my brush I'm going to move around the face and just take out those pimples. I'm also using a Wacom tablet, which means I've got pressure sensitivity turned on, which is nice to have because it means that the harder I press, the, the bigger the line is. If you see that, and if I just do a light sweep, it does a small line. So I'm just undoing those. But you can absolutely use a, uh, a mouse, but all you need to do is just make sure that you're changing with your square bracket keys the whole time to sort of match the size of what you're trying to fix to make sure that you're not making moves that are too big 
and obvious. So all I'm going to do is quickly go around the face. It's going to take me a couple of minutes and take out the most obvious of those blemishes. So it's just taken me a couple of minutes. I've just worked my way around the face and taken out the most obvious of those blemishes. If I turn this layer on and off, you can see I haven't done much. Just removed the most obvious of those blemishes. Turn that layer on and off. So it's sort of evened out uh, some of the skin. And now what I'm going to do for the second stage is I'm going to come down here to Adjustment Layers and I'm going to create a Curves Layer. I'm going to change the blending mode of this Curves Layer to Screen, which you can see brightens the image up a lot. And then with the mask selected, I'm going to hit Control or Command I on a Mac. And that's just going to invert that mask and turn everything to black. So it removes that effect. And this layer, I'm going to call Dodge. There's lots of ways to dodge and burn in Photoshop. You can use the actual dodge and burn tools. You can create a curves layer that you actually pull the curve. Uh, but I just like this method because I find it keeps a lot of the detail that I like. So I'm just going to, with this layer selected, I'm going to make sure the mask is selected. And my foreground color is white. I'm going to come here to my brush. Brush, making sure that it's 0% hardness. It's a really soft brush. And I'm making sure that I've got 3% flow because I want to build this effect up. I don't want 100% on straight away. I just want to build the effect up as I go. So let me show you what this does. With this brush here, if I just paint a lot in an area like this, you can see it just lightens it slowly the more I brush it in. So let me go back a step in my history. And what I'm going to do here is with a very small brush, square bracket keys, just dialing this brush right down. All I'm going to do is paint in, go around the face, and again, like retouches will take eight hours on a face doing this. I'm not going to do that. But all I'm going to do is just on the most obvious areas with the shadows, I'm going to come in here and just lighten up the shadows on these pores. And what that's going to do is start to even out the skin tone. And I'm not doing this because, you know, this person has bad skin. She really doesn't. I'm just doing it because when you light somebody's face, especially with a high angle light to, like this off to the side, it just means that it accentuates any pores in the face far more than it would if you met this person in real life. Lighting can be a little bit unkind like that. So what I'm doing is just evening out the effect of that lighting on some of these pores. So I'm just going to go around the face. It's just going to take me a couple of minutes again. I'm not going to do every pore, just the areas where the texture looks the strongest. And I'm just going to brighten up those shadows on the sides of these pores as I make my way around. So that's just taking me a couple of minutes. I've worked my way around the face. If I turn this layer on and off, you can see what it's done. It's just even that skin tone out a little bit where you can see the light was kind of creating shadow on some of those pimples and pores. And again, the skin looks very, very natural. You can still see every pore, all the details there, but all I've done is just evened it out a little bit. Some people will then go and create a burn layer, which if you're using this technique is just to create another curves layer and set the blending mode to multiply this time and brush that in and then use that on the highlight side of pores. Personally, I often don't take that step. I find that this is, is plenty for me and gives me the look that I want. And then the last step that I'm going to do is just to create another blank layer above. And let's just call this Tone. And with this layer, all I'm going to do, and this is the layer you have to be very, very careful with. If you use this effect too strongly, you can really mess up your portrait. You can change the shape of the face or start to make things look very plasticky. So all I'm going to do is select my brush tool here. Make sure that again, my hardness is down to zero and my flow is at 3%. We're going to be very, very gentle with this effect and just build it up. And anywhere where there is texture that's still standing out to you that you want to soften a little, making sure that I use our square bracket keys to make a, a reasonably big size brush to work on an area. We're going to hold Alt, which changes it to our eyedropper tool and pick an area. If I want to work in this area where there's texture, I want to pick a highlight color and I can check what color I'm selecting down here that would sort of work for this area just to soften it back a little bit and just brush over just a few times just to soften out that texture. And again, you need to sample a lot. If I move over here and use that same color, I'm going to start to take out some of that shadow, which is the shape of the face. And I don't want to do that. So I need to sample a slightly darker color. 
to soften this out. And if I'm moving over here, slightly darker color to make sure that it's matching the shape of the face. And this does take a little practice to get used to, but you really want to be careful. Take your time with this step because to apply this too strongly will either make your skin look overly smooth and plasticky like a mannequin, or you're going to start to change the shape of the face by painting the wrong colors over the wrong thing. So if I had this bright color sample inside painting over here, I'd be getting rid of this shadow and that roll off from the face would start to change and I'd ruin the shot. So I'm just going to work my way around changing the brush size square bracket keys using my alt to keep sampling the correct color for that area of skin and just to soften back that texture just a little bit. And that's it. So less is more with that layer, just very, very gently going around. If you feel like you've done too much, you can always dial your opacity back. But let me show you what we've done here. So if I take these layers off, all I've done is the first layer, spot healing brush to get rid of the most obvious blemishes, dodging to start to even out some of that, uh, the shadow side of those pores, and then that tone layer just to start to even out where we've got some texture that's sort of really poking through just to pull that back. And for me, that might even be slightly strong. So I come up here to my opacity and maybe just dial this to around 75%. So you can see if I hold Alt and hit the bottom layer, that's before and that's after. I'm not changing the character of my subject's face. There's still loads of lovely texture. I'm just giving her hopefully a really good skin day. So I hope that's helped and given you some simple tools that you can follow along with that will just help you elevate your portrait work a little bit by cleaning things up, but still keeping things looking very natural. And remember, this is going to be a series. So if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure you've got notifications turned on. We're still going to hit things like making eyes pop in a portrait, but keeping them looking very natural, doing things like shaping light on a face with dodge and burn, replacing texture and color in backgrounds to make your subject pop even more, and finishing off with color and contrast and sharpening. And a little bit of housekeeping before I go. For those of you who've been asking, Collection 5 is at the printers as we speak. There's been a little bit of delay this year, just like there has with everything. But hopefully by the second half of January now, those books will be available to purchase on my website. Just a reminder that they are limited edition. So once they're gone, they're gone. So if you are thinking about it, keep an eye out. Make sure you're following me on Instagram because I will notify you there first and I will mention it in the next video. But they should be available hopefully by about the 20th to the 25th of January. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them myself for over a decade now for all my online work. One of the things I love about Squarespace is how simple it is to use. I mean, I don't know how to build a website, but they make it so simple in the back end to create your pages and then drag in blocks for your text, for your photo galleries, for your videos, for your contact sheets and anything else that you might need. And the other thing I'm looking for on my website is a very clean and minimal look. And they have a whole host of templates that they offer produced by professional designers that are all nice and stripped back so that when I upload my images and my videos, those are the things that do the talking. And the website itself is just a beautiful, clean place to house my work online. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase. Thank you.